is Andy C from Ram Records. The Alive concept was kind of uh, started to gestate about 12, 18 months ago, and uh, the concept of it is to take DJing on my shows to a, sort of a new dimension, incorporating visuals, uh, you know, clips that are specifically linked to certain styles of music, and mixing them and showing when I'm mixing and incorporating all the new technology. It wasn't possible until I come across certain certain bits of kit that enabled me to have so much control over stuff. When I actually first started demoing the, a DB4 and using the MIDI side of it to link up and go through the computer that I've linked in with, with Tractor and this output in MIDI and then I've got Ableton synced to it and a MIDI fighter and uh, all other bits of kit and these buttons they're all linked to musical clips and they're sort of the effects that I can apply as the music's running can be represented visually behind me. So it, it was like a sort of year process. And uh, once we got the stage set designed, and then it was uh, it was a team effort to sort of program it and make sure it all worked. The DB4 is the hub of the show. So we connect that into uh, you know the USB hub that all the other MIDI controllers connect into and then uh, it goes through the, the MIDI hub of the tractor unit. We're using that to do the, the audio side of it as well as triggering Ableton as well. And uh, they can all run and I can press the MIDI switch button so I can flip between using the DB4 internal effects and the roll effects because they're on each channel. And then I can press the MIDI button and also control the MIDI on each channel as well. So the, the, the overall control it gives me is, is unbelievable. So it serves as a central hub and that was, that was the bit of kit that sort of you know, cemented the fact that I could do it because I'm using three turntables, so I'm still mixing three records together as well as using clips in Ableton. But you need that central focus point because you can't be, you know, worrying about this controller, this keyboard, you know, doing it with the computer. I don't actually ever touch a computer. Don't ever touch that. It's all controlled from the from the hub. input matrix is incredible, it gets quite complicated when you've got three turntables on the go, but being able to you know, load up a, a tune in one channel, create a loop, flip it onto the other channel, bring that loop back in while you create, to create build ups during breakdowns, and then use the effects because they're per channel. The ergonomics of it, I mean it's quite a culture shock at first when I got it, because it's you know different layout to any, any other mixer out there. But once I got my head around it, I actually realised that that was you know, a new step because it enabled the central point for controlling stuff and then you've got the EQs, switchable filter EQs up the top, which is, I use them, yeah, because obviously coming from the 92 and using the, the filters either side of the crossfader now, I'm using it per channel and I find that is, uh, is quite user friendly and I don't really need to trouble the EQ because the way it controls the sound, it seems to sort of control it and gel it all together, so I don't really use the EQ. I use the filters up there as well as the effects. I like the damage effects, the crushing. Once you get into it and you learn to pace it, you know, you learn to use them on you know each element of the set as you're rolling through. They're studio quality effects, aren't they? You know, the ability to you know affect the tune as it's playing, you know, if you've got two or three tunes playing and it doesn't sound alien to the tune, you know, it's, it works with the tune instead of just like, boom, I put an effect on it, it all goes crazy, you know, so that, you know, they can be as subtle or as, you know, industrial as you want because you've got the expression knob and also the big amount, you know, dry and wet knob. I tend to use them specifically on hit points for, for maximum effect, so I'm quite, quite hands-on. The layout of the DB4, like I said, when I first saw it, I was like, okay, this is something completely new. It took me by surprise, and it, you know, I had to play around with it a while. And then once it just it just clicked, like I said, with the control, with the MIDI output, and with the ergonomics of it, it becomes a central focal point. Because everything's on each specific channel, you know exactly where you're at. You know, you're not looking to the right to do the amount, and you know, and what effect time on, you're here. You know where you're at. 
and in, the, in a club environment that's essential you know everything lights up great you can, you, you can see what effect you're running you can see if it's on and because they're on each channel and with the MIDI matrix that centralized bit in the middle above the faders that's perfect sound quality just blew my mind in Westfest. I, I think we went on and just like everybody, you know, was like the dynamic range, you know, I could hear the tunes. And like I said, you don't really need to add too much EQ. You don't need to be brutal with the EQ. The way that the engine inside the mixer seems to just, you know, gel everything together and make it sound nice. So, uh, you know, it makes my job easier and I can concentrate on the effects and mixing the tunes. I just did a remix for uh, example and laid back Luke, uh, Natural Disaster. We've just done Rams 100th release this year. Every two weeks we've had a release from the guys. Going into next year, we're 20 years old. Rams 20 years old next year. So, you know, we've got an incredible year lined up. Parties, albums, you know, everything. And uh, with a bit of luck, we can get a bit of time. I'm going to go in the studio myself. And uh, once your live project's out of the way, go to Australia, take a laptop and try and get some tunes down in the studio.